Hi, my name is Robert Aloy. I'm writing a book about improving espresso shots using coffee data science. This book is a culmination of three years of writing articles and collecting data and doing analysis on coffee to improve my own espresso shots. Um, along this way, I've been publishing articles uh, to help other people. And publishing articles has also given me time to reflect on um, the work I've been doing and, and push me towards uh, extracting more data or spending more time on data that maybe I don't think is as necessary. Um, so I, I first encountered espresso when I lived in Paris. And uh, when I had uh, espresso, it wasn't because I was interested in coffee or even liked coffee. I didn't like coffee. I just wanted to hang out with friends and I didn't want to be cheap and not buy something. So I bought the cheapest thing on the menu. And uh, that so happened to be espresso. It tasted like someone melted a piece of chocolate on my tongue. Um, and uh, the, it just, the flavor completely engulfed my tongue and my mouth and I fell in love. And I would have espresso often. I never thought about making it at home. It just felt like something magical I could get um, while at any coffee shop in Europe. And then I moved back to the US and there was nothing like it where I was living. Um, there was some coffee shops, but I didn't know anything about where to find really good espresso. So I stopped drinking coffee for a few years and I got back into it because of my wife's family. And then I eventually bought a, uh, an espresso machine. Um, and then I ended up finding a Kim Express, uh, not this one, but a different colored one um, at an estate sale that I bought for $36. And I started making coffee with it and it, it would produce some amazing shots, but I, I had some wild inconsistencies um, and I wasn't controlling variables well. Um, I didn't even weigh my grounds. I just, you know, was it enough? Did it fill the basket enough? Um, so sometimes I got really amazing shots and sometimes I didn't. But I decided to start using a data sheet um, about four years ago because I wanted to improve my shots uh, and it had nothing to do with writing articles. Um, but I started discovering how I could improve my espresso and around um, that time I also discovered the staccato um, espresso shot, which is a layering shot by uh, sifting a coffee using a sifter like the crew sifter and then uh, layering the uh, different particle sizes into the shot. So I set to work on trying to figure out why that, that method worked better. And I also wanted to scour the internet and find out all the data that was available for espresso. And it turns out that there's not that much data on espresso uh, publicly available. Uh, it might be privately available or it might be held in um, companies or in groups that make their own machines or grinders, but to the public, it is not something that is easily available. And there's plenty of videos out there to try this method or that method, but usually there's not a data behind it. So um, what I've done is I've tried to look at every aspect of my espresso making and figure out how I can improve that. And a lot of times I experiment with different methods um, of maybe bean storage or um, how to distribute the puck or how much tamp pressure to use. And so I wrote articles as I went along in this journey, and now I've decided to write this book. And this book is an extraction of all these pages um, and, and all this time I've spent into collecting data on espresso to be able to share with you, um, to help you improve your espresso. So my aim was to talk about each of the major variables I look at and what is good, better, and best for each one. And then how I can uh, improve that. And, and hopefully you can find in this book some ways to uh, improve your espresso and take it beyond the level that you think it's at. Um, because my aim is not for a good espresso. My aim is for the best espresso. I'm continuously striving to improve my espresso shot. And I still am not sure if I've really hit the best shot. I've had multiple times where I've hit the best shot I've had ever before followed up by another time where I've had a better shot. So I know that there can still be incremental improvements.
So my, my hope is if you, if you buy this book, your espresso will get better. Um, that maybe you can learn something with some of this data. Maybe it'll inspire you to collect your own data um, on espresso. And then instead of having conversations about, um, I think this is better, or you think this is better, um, just from like a, a single shot, we can talk about, this, my data shows that there seems to be this trend, you know, that maybe you should do longer pre-infusion, or maybe you should tamp a little lighter, and then you would get a higher extraction and, and maybe a better taste. Um, So my background is computer vision. When I was in college, um, I switched to electrical engineering from mechanical engineering, and I ended up taking a class that allowed me to take an image processing class in my junior year. Um, and then I, I went a little heavy on the class load because I decided I wanted to finish a bachelor's and master's in four years. Um, and when I took this class, I fell in love with image processing. And so for all the courses that I could, I, I made an image processing project. Then I graduated uh, and then I went to Notre Dame for uh, my PhD. Uh, and I uh, did a PhD in computer science and engineering. My dissertation was on a 3D face scanner that you would walk through. So the um, scanning technology at the time would uh, move to scan your face. Um, and my technology, everything would be stationary and you'd walk through and it would, it would scan. Um, so it just required some head tracking and, and fast cameras and there's a lot of complications and I collect a lot of data. And then I went on to a company um, in Virginia that did long range 3D face recognition. And there I touched every aspect of the face recognition system from data collection to quality assurance to algorithm development to failure analysis to production code um, to research. And when I left there, I went to Apple. Um, I first started on the watch. I did uh, wrist detection and uh, background heart rate on the uh, uh, first gen of the, the watch as well as uh, series one and two. And those algorithms have stayed relatively unchanged um, since then, and they're still on the watch today. Uh, I then switched over to Face ID for obvious reasons, and um, I, I worked really hard on, on making sure that Face ID was a success and, and continued to be a success um, multiple years in a row. Um, and then but my, my, I ended up managing a team, and we've grown to um, work on some other projects like ARKit and people detection was a really fun one that we worked on. So I took this knowledge and I've been applying it to espresso. So I'm not a professional barista, but I am a professional data scientist. Um, and my, my hope is that by uh, cross applying that to coffee, that I can improve um, coffee beyond what it is now. These are my tools. This is my typical setup. So my, my grinder, I also have a rock and a few other grinders as well. Um, my Kim Express, this is my uh, love of an espresso machine. I, I've enjoyed it so much that I've delayed on buying something nicer or maybe something more expensive, not necessarily nicer. I've got a decent espresso machine. Um, and so it's a, a, a spring uh, lover machine. Um, and they're, they're kind of rare, but they're interesting because the uh, group head is part of the boiler, so you don't have to preheat the group head, um, like something like a love of um, And then I have a basket of tools, uh, which makes it easier to, to keep my space somewhat clean. Um, I have multiple baskets and uh, a refractometer and, and obviously a sifter. Um, but, oh, and coffee. I have coffee in uh, vacuum jars. So I did a, a fun study comparing um, vacuum jars to sealed jars and put some numbers to uh, performance on, on how it tastes.